Video. Today I'm here with Shelly Corcoran, photographer. She does a lot of work in Longford for the Longford Leader as well. And Phil Atkinson from Arda that's an artist and he does a lot of paintings. Airbrush. Yeah. Airbrush. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about their exhibition that they had in the Boxage Theatre in Longford and it's ongoing for the next three weeks. So if you're around, pop in there and have a look at it and see what talented talent these people have. Um, so Shelley, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us what kind of sparked the idea for this exhibition. Uh, well, Shana, um, we decided to do an exhibition and combine our three talents, so it's myself, Phil and Angelica who have here today, um, because we're three artists, we work in Longford and we're portrait artists, um, but we're very, very different artists, so uh, there's three different mediums, so I do photography, Phil does airbrushing and then Angelica. Um, her is this kind of comic book uh, type of artwork for this exhibition. So we decided to come together, pick one theme, which is long for the long for people, and portray it in our mediums. Um, and we just wanted to see how one theme could be portrayed in so many different ways. And Shana also, um, within that one theme of long for people, uh, each, of, each of us um, had our own theme. Um, and portrayed it in a, a specific way. Perfect. Um, Phil, what was your theme with, with your art? I am, um, along with picking, I suppose, some of the same models that we we all used, uh, mine was to do with the environment, really. Um, and, and robots. They could make me You were mixing the, like, Human figure with the robot figure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, we have some of the catalogues here, the little books that they put together. Um, each artist has their own part in the little book. Uh, tell us about your theme, Shelley. Um, but Shelley, my theme, I decided to go down the um, psychoanalytic um, route and I wanted to kind of portray dreams. Um, so Ernest Hartman was somebody I was kind of looking into and uh, his study about dreams um, in a psychoanalytical way um, showed that even like all over the world, not just in the one country or the one town, um, people's dreams tended to um, focus on the same kind of thing. So if they were stressed or worried about, let's say, family, jobs, um, friends, illness, something like that. So when they analysed people's dreams worldwide, regardless of their background or culture, um, it all kind of um, had the one um, trigger or the one um, kind of theme running through it. So, so say like if you people. were stressed, you dream about like an airplane crashing or something along those lines that everyone were kind of dream about. Exactly, okay. yeah. So they could relate then people's dreams um, worldwide. So I just found that really interesting because um, we were just portraying love for people, but like within that, um, so the, the people that we did cho choose to um, exhibit or as our models or our muses, um, they were all from different backgrounds, different ages um, within Longford. Um, but then within that, their dreams or their worries probably would all be the same as well. So, you know, family, friends and jobs, that kind of thing, yeah. How you, what was the process of you choosing the people? Like, how did you go about it? How did you ask them? It was a friend, was it like any family? What kind of it was a mixture of everything really, of everybody really. So it was people I mix with on a daily basis. So um, from my students in school to um, relatives to then uh, my hairdresser. Um, so literally everybody. Um, that I came across on a daily basis um, and I did, I wanted that complete kind of mixture to people that were really close to me but then other people that you know I would be friendly with but I wouldn't necessarily like to see um, regularly so I just wanted a whole mixture um, and then where I chose my let's say locations um, 
Again, I wanted it around Longford, uh, but I wanted it to kind of maybe be a little bit more earthy um, to to coincide with that whole dream kind of notion. Yeah, so nature was in it. Yeah, yeah. so it was kind of like in, in forests, in woods, um, in water. So all of that to kind of lend itself to um, the dream aspect. Yeah, and my favourite one out of all of them was the water shots. So you got two of your girls to get into the water, how did you manage that? Um, very easily actually. Um, I just asked them and they said yes. Um, so we uh, went out to um, Ockenclef, a place in, uh, in Longford and um, we literally just got into the well, they got into the water. Um, I was very grateful, I wouldn't have done it probably. Um, so they got into the water and we took the shots there. Um, and that was kind of the whole water idea is maybe, um, I suppose we associate water with rebirth and renewing, um, that kind of element. So that's why. So it was a dream. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So I suppose if people were dreaming, um, I suppose you could attach that if people were dreaming maybe about um, pregnancy or birth or a new job or something new um, that would tie into the kind of water aspect. So that's why I wanted them in the water. So um, I did choose um, young models for that as well because I wanted that element of kind of youth and reborn. Yeah, and I believe the girl that had just where she has her head above water. Yeah. There was a dress, oh, she had a dress on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just well, I said, was that a swimsuit? And she no. said, no, no, it was a long dress. <laughs> I was quite specific about the clothes as well. I wanted everybody in a dress. Um, well, the girls obviously. Um, so I wanted them in a dress to have it that maybe a little bit more um, traditional rather than uh, I didn't want kind of um, urban kind of modern clothes for these photographs just because I want again the dreams and the, the traditional aspects of that and something that could be um, you know connected maybe in a local aspect with Longford but worldwide as well so you know you associate maybe females with dresses and then the men that I use I want them in suits so I wanted it quite traditional in that aspect. And did you have any, many men in it? No not really. Um, and Sean I think? Sean you know? yes and I had him in the woods Um, he I wanted him again to look like a little um, kind of nymph or a little elf so uh, yeah again quite earthy um, and then um, he a growl with his dog exactly yes yeah, so, no it wasn't actually um, uh, we borrowed those dogs for the photographs <laughs> but um, yeah so they were very good the dogs were very good the models were very good um, because a lot of my models um, were quite uncomfortable in the situations I had them, whether they were lying on the ground or um, in the water or whatever the case may be, but they were very good and you know, a big thank you to them because we couldn't have done it without them. Absolutely. Um, Phil, I have a quick question for you. Uh, the cover of the book is my favourite of what your pieces. Can you tell us a little bit about that and show to the camera as well? I am. Well, it's my concept. The, the, all the artwork is like a panel, like it's a panel from a, a page from a, a, a comic book kind of thing. And this is the last panel in, 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 on, on the page. So the, the whole concept was to do with nature similar to Shelley's. So, but mine is more to do with the, there's a robot in it. So the robot is witnessing nature reclaiming the, the earth after all humans have gone and such. Right. So basically it's kind of peering into a cityscape and this, the city in the background is all blurred out but there's kind of evidence there that there's there's life just re being reborn as such. So there's an abandoned kind of feeling to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and the traffic lights are just another man-made object which nature is reclaiming. I really love that, yeah. yeah. It's a great idea. I love it. We as artists, for well myself definitely, um, I have kind of an idea, but um, it's open to progression and change. I think that's really important that you might, you know, have something, um, but you know, when you get to the location or the, the particular model, it mightn't actually be exactly how you imagined it. So you need to be open for change and progression to let, you know, and, and be be able to let, you know, the idea 
um, progress, I suppose, yeah. rather than kind of be very stringent and stick to exactly yeah. what you I want. think you have really good chemistry with the models you're working with because you you kind of share the opinions and the ideas of what it's going to be like, and we kind of. Uh, we kind of use our own ideas and put them together and then all the work is then just kind of passed over to you when it comes to actually taking the picture. So it's, it's a really exciting process to... Yeah, well that, that's a good point. Because um, I think, like for me, I like to work with my models or my muses um, and bring out a little bit of their personality and who they are. So, um, and especially for this exhibition, because it was all about long for people. So I really wanted to kind of show their own individual personality, a little, a little snippet, a little slight part of that. So I like to work with the models um, and, you know, if they have ideas or they have like a suggestion, you know, definitely I'm open to one of it and go with it. So Phil, how does your artistic process come about? Do you work alone? How do you decide what you're going to do? Just give us a little bit of, a, uh, of an insight as to what you do in your process. Um, well, I, do, I work alone, yeah. I work in the studio, um, I suppose, then. Um, come up with whatever the idea is, the concept, and I might do some kind of thumbnail sketches and stuff and try to figure out exactly the direction I want to go in. Um, and then from there, uh, I suppose I find models then to recreate some of the poses and such for me. So with Shelley, the poses are very brief and it's a very quick process, but with yours, I imagine it's not as quick. How does that fare out time-wise? How do, how do you plan it out? Is, do they have to sit for long or how does it work? Um, I suppose once I have the idea and, and the poses that I'm looking for, like I usually use like thumbnails, like just little matchstick men as such, just to kind of see which is going to flow with the idea the best. Um, and then from there, like yeah, if I, have, if I get a model then to come in and we sit and go through, so I'll do a variation on a few different poses that I'm looking for. And then when I sit down and flip through the photographs then afterwards then I, I, I kind of I might use two or three of the photographs to make the okay. one pose then okay. depending on it just depends like that, it's an evolution. Right. Um, as it's going like. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. De definitely not how I would have expected. So yeah, that's interesting. That's it for today. We're gonna wrap it up. I wanna thank Shelley and Phil so much for doing this with me today. Um, where can we actually find you if you wanna follow your your work? Um, well, my stuff can be found on uh, www.lawfordigitalarts.ie and on Instagram as well on Corporate Chevy if you want to look me up. Perfect, and yourself Phil? Um, mine is, Facebook is just Phil Atkinson Art um, and then I have an Instagram page which I've hosted more to which is Phil Atkinson Artist as well. Perfect, I'll put them in the description below on this video so you can just have a link follow there so that seems to be it thank you very much guys for today and i look forward to your work in the future thanks jenna